one way in which we can visualize conjugation in 1,3 diene is by actually constructing the pi molecular orbitals of that 1,3 diene. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this lecture. We're going to construct the pi molecular orbitals of 1,3 butadiene. Now, 1,3-butadiene consists of four carbon atoms, so that means to form 1,3-butadiene, we have to combine the four 2p orbitals of each one of those carbon atoms. But instead of actually combining the individual 2p orbitals four times, we're going to combine two ethylene molecules to form our 1,3-butadiene. Now, before we follow that step, let's actually take a look at ethylene and see how we form the pi bond in ethylene from our two 2p orbitals of the carbon. So each one of these carbons has a 2p orbital that is found on the same exact energy level. Now, when they approach one another, they form, they combine to form our pi bond because we're inputting two orbitals, we have to produce two molecular orbitals. So we have the atomic orbitals and our molecular orbitals that are formed. So if they combine via the same sign, so we have a positive sign here and a positive sign here, and they approach, they form the bonding pi molecular orbital that is lower in energy because we have very good overlap and they do not cancel one another out. However, if this 2p orbital flips, if this is positive, but this becomes negative in sign, if these two wave functions are opposite in sign, when they combine, they will cancel one another out and they will form a node in the middle and that will increase the energy of that molecular pi star anti-bonding orbital. So basically, the way that we form ethylene, the pi bond in ethylene is by combining these two p orbitals to form our bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So in the same way that we basically used the 2p orbitals and combined them to form the molecular orbitals of ethylene, we're going to use the molecular orbitals of ethylene pi and pi star to form the molecular orbitals of 1,3 butadiene. Now the question is, which one of these do we combine and how do we combine them? So let's begin by listing all the possible combinations. So basically, we can combine the pi with our pi, we can combine pi with a negative pi, we can combine our pi star with our pi star, we can combine the pi star with a negative pi star, we can combine our pi with a positive pi star, and we can combine our pi with a negative pi and a pi star. So we have these six major combinations. The question is which ones of these can actually combine to form molecular orbitals? So recall one basic rule in nature. So from quantum mechanics, we know that only overlap between orbitals that are found along the same energy level will actually produce stable enough molecular orbitals. So notice that pi and pi are found on the same exact energy level. Pi star and pi star are found on the same exact energy level. And the same thing is true for pi negative pi and pi star negative pi star. So all these four combinations basically produce our orbitals. However, these two combinations, the pi and the pi star, are found on different energy levels, so these will not uh, combine to produce our molecular orbitals. So these are the only combinations that we have to actually consider. So let's begin by combining with the, po the positive uh, pi with the positive pi. So the positive pi looks like this. So we basically have 
our blue regions on top, the blue regions simply signify our positive sign. So the green regions are the lower lobes, those are our negative sign. So we basically combine our pi, where this is our pi, with our positive pi. So we basically combine two of the same exact types of molecular orbitals and we form the following molecular orbital, the first molecular orbital of 1,3-butadiene. So this is 1. Now, what about the, this one? So we have pi and we're combining it with negative pi. So negative pi simply means we have to inverse all these signs. So if this is positive, the negative simply means the bottom become blue and the top and the top become green. So now we're basically combining this one and this one. So this is basically, this is the combination of pi and plus pi, where this is pi minus pi. Now notice here, we have our blues and all the greens on the bottom, so we don't have any notes. However, here, these interact well, these overlap well, but these middle ones, the second carbon and third carbon, don't interact very well. In fact, they are inverse, they're opposite in signs, and so this contains one note. Now, what about the pi star and our positive pi star? So let's move on to pi star plus pi star. So if we look at pi star, it looks something like this, and we basically combine it with itself. So we have blue on top on the first lobe, blue on the bottom on the second one, then we combine that same type of load, so blue on top and blue on the bottom. Now green goes on, top, on the bottom here, on the top here, on the bottom here, on the top here. And notice that in such a combination, each one of these sections contains a node. So we have three nodes here, one node here, and zero nodes here. So these nodes will become important in just a moment when we arrange our molecular orbitals in increasing energy. And finally, this is the last combination that we want to make. So we have the pi star minus the pi star. So the pi star remains unchanged. It's basically this orbital here. So we have our green region on the bottom and our green region on top. We have blue region on the top and blue region on the bottom. Now, negative pi star is basically the opposite wave function, has the opposite sign as this. So for the negative pi star, this becomes green, this becomes blue, and this becomes blue, and this becomes green. We simply inverse, we change our colors. So that means this becomes here we have blue, here we have blue, and here we have green, and here we have green. Now, if we count our nodes, we see that now these two uh, p orbitals overlap very well. We have the greens with the blue, the greens with the greens, and the blue with the blue. So there is no node here, but we do have two nodes here. So we have zero nodes here, one node here, three, uh, two nodes here, and three nodes here. So basically, the smaller the number of nodes, the better the overlap is, and the more stable and lower in energy it is. So this is our lowest in energy. So let's draw that somewhere on the bottom. So we have very good overlap between these orbitals. So all the blues, the positive, interact with the positive and the negative interact with our negative. So this is our combination of pi plus pi. Now the next one is pi minus pi. So we have pi 
minus pi. And that produces only one node, so we have this molecular or orbital. So the next one is this one, because this one has two and this one has three, this is the next in line. So this is higher in energy and less stable than this molecular orbital. So let's draw this one. So next we have um, our blue goes here, the blue goes here, then the blue goes here, and the blue goes here, uh, and the green goes here, the green goes here here and here. So let's draw in our nodes. So we have one node here, two nodes here. So this is our um, pi star minus pi star. And the final one is pi, plus, pi star plus pi star is the least stable one. So we have this one here. So we have our blue node on top, then the blue node on the bottom, the blue node on top, the blue node on the bottom, and finally we have this, 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 and we can put in the three nodes that exist. We have node here, here, and here. So basically the energy level of this is here, of this is here, here, and here. So we can see that in the same way that we can construct our molecular orbitals of ethylene and we get two molecular orbitals, we can construct our molecular orbitals of our 1,3-butadiene. And we see that there is a bunch of conjugation taking place. That is, there is an overlap that exists between the second and third carbon of our 1,3-butadiene.